Hi, Fast Recaps here. Today I will explain a 2024 American dark fantasy film titled Damsel, spoilers ahead. Sit back and enjoy. When the dragon attacked and killed his army, the king planted his sword firmly in the ground. He bowed down to ask for pardon. In a distant land many years later, there are two sisters named Elodie and Floria. Royalty from a kingdom plagued by poverty and surrounded by unforgiving, desolate lands. A red priestess came to their kingdom and requested Lord Bayford, the father of the sisters, for Elodie's hand in marriage, and Lord Bayford consented. Elodie hesitated at first, but eventually agreed out of concern for her starving people. The family of four is en route to Orea, where Elodie is scheduled to wed a charming prince named Henry. Elodie and Henry spent a day getting to know each other, and Elodie felt that she had possibly made the correct decision in agreeing to marry the charming prince who had immediately captured her heart. While Floria and Lord Bayford were content with marrying Elodie to a wealthy prince, their stepmother, Lady Bayford, became suspicious of the royal family of Orea when she observed her husband's peculiar behavior. Following a confidential discussion with Queen Isabel, despite her efforts to alert Elodie, the wedding proceeded as planned. Following the marriage ceremony, the newly married couple ascended to the summit of the mountain to partake in an age-old ritual, which Henry described as a gesture of respect to their forebears. When she reached the summit, Elodie observed Queen Isabel dressed in the attire of a red priestess. Queen Isabel gave Elodie a coin, and the newly married couple followed her to the altar. Queen Isabel recounted the tale of the kingdom of Orea's origins. Upon their ancestors' arrival on the island, they discovered that a creature was also residing on the land. The creature exhibited a fierce thirst for blood and annihilated the village. The king gathered his soldiers to seek revenge for his people, but he failed miserably. The king was compelled by the creature to offer up his three cherished daughters in return for the safety of his people. It was a choice between sacrificing his daughters or risking the lives of many others. Despite his deep affection for his daughters, the king remained committed to his duty as a ruler and prioritized the protection of his people above all else. A pact was formed when the three daughters perished at the hands of the beast, leading to the establishment of the kingdom of Orea. Using the small dagger from the ceremony, Queen Isabel cut the palms of Henry and Elodie, and the newly married couple formed a blood pact, establishing Elodie as royalty. In order to finalize the ritual, Elodie tossed the coin she had been given into the abyss. Henry held Elodie in a bridal manner as he started walking towards the exit, in order to go back to the palace. At least, that was Elodie's belief before she was mercilessly thrown into the abyss. The branches of the lifeless trees at the base of the chasm softened the impact of her descent, and as Elodie rose, she discovered remnants of clothing that she recognized were not her own. Terror consumed Elodie as she grasped that she was the sacrificial offering. Elodie heard a faint fluttering sound behind her and turned around to see a glow emanating from a cave. She moved towards the light and discovered a bird engulfed in flames. Upon aiding the bird, Elodie heard a loud roar, accompanied by the cries of the burning birds. Elodie evaded the birds and sought strength from her deceased mother. This phrase seemed to grab the dragon's interest, prompting Elodie to conceal herself upon spotting the creature. The dragon mentioned detecting a royal scent emanating from Elodie, causing her to comprehend that it was the combination of Henry's blood and hers that the dragon was sensing. The dragon exhaled flames, prompting Elodie to flee to avoid them. Elodie let out a scream when she came across the burned body of a woman she recalled seeing on the day she first arrived at the palace. Elodie concealed herself and remained silent to avoid being discovered by the dragon. Eventually, when she no longer heard the presence of the dragon, Elodie utilized the accessory on her dress to create a light source and locate an exit from the cave. She maneuvered along a narrow pathway but lost her footing and tumbled down to a lower level. Elodie discovered herself gazing at a luminous cavern. She moved towards the source of the glow with little strength, but her progress was halted by a deep pit. Summoning her bravery, Elodie leapt across to the opposite side. Despite slipping, Elodie's gown accessory fortunately became snagged between the rocks, enabling her to utilize the sharp object hidden in her corset for climbing back up. The glowing objects on the wall were actually glowworms, and Elodie collected a handful of them to use as illumination as she neared the puddle of water she had discovered nearby. After tasting the water from the puddle and finding it revolting, she positioned herself in the center with her neck arched upwards, capturing the droplets of water trickling down from the ice shards above. However, as the ice dissolved, Elodie quickly leapt aside to avoid the dragon's flames. She fled until she reached a narrow section of the cave where the dragon could not access. Elodie discovered additional garments and noticed that the names of all the women sacrificed before her were inscribed on the wall. There were too many lives lost, and Elodie felt heartbroken at the prospect of not surviving. Elodie examined the significant injury on her legs and rested for a short period. Still, she slumbered fitfully, envisioning how the previous women may have felt when they found themselves in her shoes. One of the women, named Victoria, glanced at her and quietly commented that everything was deceptive. Upon awakening, Elodie became frantic upon noticing the glowworms attaching to the injury on her leg. She relaxed upon understanding that the glowworms were in fact healing her wound and expressed regret for underestimating them. Elodie examined the map sketched on the wall and proceeded with her exploration. In a room with three different paths, Elodie opted for the central route, mirroring the guidance she had seen on the map. After that, she heard musical notes and discovered the crystals that signaled she was nearing the exit. Upon discovering a crown on the floor with a letter V inscribed on it, Elodie was relieved to learn that Victoria had successfully escaped. 
However, Elodie recognized her error when she found out that the exit was not a genuine way out, but rather an opening positioned high up in the mountain, which she should only choose if she preferred a less agonizing death than being burned or devoured alive. She then observed men in the distance heading towards the mountain and shouted loudly to attract their notice. Of course, they did not hear her. The sole individual who heard her cries was the dragon, causing Elodie to retreat in fear upon discovering the remnants of another individual, likely Victoria. The dragon was on the verge of breathing fire when they heard the men shouting for Elodie. Elodie descended and tracked the sounds until she arrived at a bigger chamber where she discovered the remnants of three young dragons. Elodie was shocked to discover that Queen Isabel's story was not true. In reality, the king attacked the dragon's den without reason and murdered the dragon's offspring. Death alone was not sufficient retribution for the wicked king, so the dragon resolved to inflict upon him a suffering even greater than it had endured. Three were killed, so three will be surrendered. Elodie caught sight of another voice and promptly concealed herself, understanding that the dragon would also hear the men. And indeed, the dragon eliminated the majority of the men and conversed with Lord Bayford who had organized the search party for his daughter. Lord Bayford drew his sword and courageously confronted the creature, but was lifted up, causing his sword to drop and stab into the ground. After discovering that the man in front of her was the father of the person being sacrificed, the dragon instructed him to summon Elodie. Lord Bayford spoke loudly as he expressed regret to his daughter, who remained out of sight. He confessed that he was aware even before the wedding that Elodie would be sacrificed, but he allowed it to occur because he was promised a substantial sum of gold. He believed that sacrificing his beloved daughter for the benefit of his people was the right decision, but he was mistaken, and he now laments the choice he made. The dragon grew tired of his theatrics and shoved him to the ground, offering him a final opportunity to call for his daughter. But Lord Bayford ignored the advice and instead shouted for Elodie to remain hidden. The dragon became enraged and forcefully dug her claws into Lord Bayford. One of Lord Bayford's hidden men inadvertently lost his footing, prompting the dragon to move towards his location, allowing Elodie the opportunity to bid farewell to her father and flee. The dragon emerged from her den to search for Elodie and exhaled flames into the sky to display her rage. Witnessing this, the queen was furious, understanding that the dragon's fury indicated that the sacrifice had managed to escape. She approached the ship where Floria and Lady Bayford were located, seizing Floria to offer her as a sacrifice to the dragon, while her man stabbed Lady Bayford and abandoned her. Lady Bayford, wounded from the stabbing, proceeded towards the mountain to rescue Floria, where she encountered Elodie. Elodie instructed her stepmother to remain behind while she returned to the mountain to rescue Floria. The queen intended to cut Henry's hand to fill it with Floria's blood, but he declined, stating that Floria was too young for sacrifices. The queen accused him of being weak before cutting her own hands, blending her blood with Floria's, and being thrown into the cave by the guards. Elodie went to the location of the sacrifice. However, it was too late, and she realized that her sister was already in the depths of the cave. She descended into the chasm and collected some glowworms to treat her injuries and also gathered some for her sister. She trimmed her hair and utilized it to create a booby trap before retrieving her father's sword. In the meantime, the dragon was protecting Floria while she awaited Elodie's arrival to rescue her sister. She heard a distant clanging noise, which turned out to be Elodie's booby trap, and flew towards the source of the sound. Elodie hurried to her sister the instant the dragon departed, aiding her sibling in hiding before the dragon returned. Upon finding Floria in hiding, Elodie seizes the chance to aim the sword at the dragon's eye. The dragon taunted her, saying that the sword wouldn't kill her but would only enrage her. However, Elodie did not intend to kill the dragon because she understood that, similar to herself, the dragon was simply misguided. Elodie attempted to convey the truth to the dragon. The girls she was eliminating were not the daughters of the king who had killed her baby dragons, but rather random daughters from a different kingdom. Elodie attempted to clarify the truth to the dragon, but this only angered the dragon, who rejected Elodie's explanation. She unleashed a burst of flames that struck Elodie. Fortunately, there was water behind Elodie. Elodie emerged from the water and hurried towards the sword she had inadvertently let fall, but she was tackled to the ground by the dragon, who dug her claws into Elodie. Elodie pierced the dragon's eye with a stab, causing the beast to fling her aside in agony, throwing her coincidentally right beside the sword that Elodie had plunged into the dragon's chest. Elodie cried out, insisting that she was not part of the royal family, but the dragon remained unconvinced as the scent of Henry's blood still hung in the air. Elodie plunged the dragon's hand that gripped her, causing her to be thrown away once more. Elodie made her way to a pillar while the dragon followed slowly behind her. Elodie taunted the dragon, causing the beast to breathe fire. Due to a rock formation located behind Elodie, the fire bounced back towards her. The dragon lay exhausted on the ground, giving Elodie the opportunity to seize the moment and reveal the truth. She disclosed that she was not of royal descent and had only been manipulated by the royal family. Because the dragon was beginning to calm down, Elodie, utilized the glowworms to treat the dragon's injuries. She then went back to the palace to interrupt the third wedding ceremony and prevent the evil royals from sacrificing another innocent woman. Henry apologized profusely upon seeing Elodie and tried to justify his actions as if he had not just married two women and sacrificed them into the chasm. Elodie interrupted him, refusing to listen to his foolish excuses. She then gently touched the bride's cheek and urged her to escape with her family right away, and the bride didn't need to be told again. Elodie gave the remaining guests a final opportunity to escape. Some heeded her warning and ran away in terror, while others remained, unsure or disbelieving. Queen Isabel becomes enraged and tells Elodie that they are not afraid of her. However, Elodie replies that she is not the one they should be afraid of. Afterwards, she declared, 
this is where your tale concludes. At that precise moment, the dragon made its entrance, causing some of the remaining guests to flee in fear. The dragon paused briefly as Elodie began to exit the palace before unleashing its wrath. The dragon slaughtered all the remaining members of the king's royal family. As Elodie strode across the bridge, a dragon soared overhead, with the palace ablaze in the background. Once she had recuperated, Elodie, Floria, and Lady Bayford boarded their ship and set sail back home, accompanied by the dragon. Subscribe for more videos like this, leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.